Well, it's already a month and a half. Worldwide attention has been drawn to Ukraine, where Russian brutal and inhuman military aggression is in full swing. Though, as it appeared, the brave Ukrainian nation had a lot to offer to occupiers in response and is successfully backlashing the Russians. So what all this has to do with HRGC? Well, because of the war in Ukraine, nearly on a daily basis we are watching Ukrainian troops on air, predominantly in beard. Apparently beard has become something very common for army, not to mention modern Hollywood blockbusters and heroic military action movies about special forces where units usually wear beards. Hence, today we will talk about combat beard. A soldier having been in a harsh combat zone for a long time will more likely wear beard like this. Army is all about discipline, subordination and regulations. Every grooming standard has its specific purpose. The core idea behind them is an effective mechanism of order that applies to a large quantity of personnel. What's this about refusing to shave? Who is refusing to shave? We are. Who is we? We! According to high-ranked military officials of various army branches, all the above mentioned has to do with long-standing traditions of uniformity and hygiene. With strict dress codes, these are manifesting a sense of professionalism and group identity. However, looking deep into the meaning of army code, we will see that the main reason of these harsh restrictions is to forge a formidable and resilient soldier will not only execute combat missions effectively, but will survive consequently. Yes, survival is one of the critical aspects of service. A clean and nicely shaven face is one of the most fundamental requirements in the army. So why? Why the army is so hostile to beard or any kind of facial hair and how it refers to survival? Like every common tradition, army customs also have their origin. Beards became banned in the US military in World War I for very practical reasons. During frequent and terrorizing biological warfare, the need to wear gas masks was indispensable. Servicemen were asked to shave on the battlefield. If not, the mask on the bearded face could not guarantee the complete impermeability of toxic air. On the other hand, it would be extremely difficult to breathe with a beard in mask, causing a fatal outcome. From that time, this practical approach transformed into the tradition embedded in service codes up to date. But how it looks today, after a century when technology has surged to an unimaginable height, approaches and views have changed and the battlefield itself has seen a drastic metamorphosis. A biological weapon is not used as a conventional means of fight anymore. Firstly, due to a high risk for the user itself. Even during World War I, in case of slight miscalculation of weather conditions or the swift change of wind direction, it could impose a serious threat to its exploiter. Secondly, the biological weapon became highly restricted by international law and ultimately is considered as an inhuman weapon. As a result, we have seen it being used only a couple of times by some outcast dictators. Yes, there were rumors about Russian having used it in Mariupol, but obviously at the end of the day it was not confirmed, so let's leave this case to more competent people. To get back to the point, Western armies have seen deep changes too. Freedom of expression and minority rights have prevailed over military doctrines. Beard becomes the issue not only of hygiene or order, but the issue of religion, even a matter of group identity, but most of all, condition in which a soldier is serving. Probably the best example for the visual transformation of Western armies is Harjit Sajjan, the Defense Minister of Canada, a badass veteran of the Afghanistan campaign and conflicts in Bosnia-Herzegovina. A Sikh with Indian origins bears a bushy wavy black-grey moustache and beard from the very beginning of his military career, and obviously it has not hindered him to become the first soldier of Canada. On the practical view of point today, we clearly see that beard has become like a natural visual aspect of battlefield endured soldier. And yet, it is not a point. While beard is a tenet of faith for different confessions or practical approach for soldiers in combat zone, scientists have their arguments, turning upside down the notion that long beard might be a dirty thing and could harbor much unpleasant stuff. 
According to a recent scientific study carried out in the USA, American scholars came to conclusions that bearded men is three times more resilient to methicillin-resistant stuff. It appears that beard is evolving some of the most sophisticated weapons, known as microkind antibiotics, killing all other competitor bacteria. Scientists identified the silent assassins as part of a species called Staphylococcus epidermidis. When they tested these novel forms of bacteria against a particularly drug-resistant form of Escherichia coli, the sort that causes severe internal infections, Epidermitis terminated it without any problems. I'll come to you, man. During the same study, the researchers suggested also that micro scratches of the skin that appeared during shaving may support potentially harmful bacterial colonization and proliferation. What does it mean for the army? It means that being on a combat mission for a long time, covering big distances covertly, let's say in a hostile environment, such as jungles, deserts, or a dusty concrete urban area with so-called heavy dust, bearded soldier would be more resistant and will be less exposed to diseases that enter body mostly from nostrils and mouth. Another important point we highlighted above is the country of service. For example, for Afghan men, a beard is a sign of manhood. According to British soldiers, a beard was an easy way to earn the trust of locals. That is why special operations forces particularly tend to look like cavemen. Besides, the beards not only helped bring them closer to Afghans, but they also made them look different from other army branches and conventional forces who should apply standards. And here we come to group identity and style. In modern Hollywood blockbusters, we already got used to a fierce special operations member with a rigorous beardy look, who is not only effective in combat, using its extraterrestrial combat skills, but looks frightening as well. Not to mention movies about the Viking era, where long beard is a kind of sign of being fierce Norseman. Thus today, nearly every special operator tends to be bearded during its deployment. Thirdly, your host today, that's me, lived tough experiences when asked to shave the face and even his neck during the field cross in chilly windy weather using river or spring water. How am I supposed to shave in cold water? From first-hand experience, there are countless reasons why it is unnecessarily useless. Skin irritation, risk of catching some infection using dirty water, waste of time, energy or even supplies, and high risk of being incapable to defend yourself if ambushed during the process of shaving. But still, instructors and commanders were relentlessly requiring recruits to be cleanly shaven even during the long distances marshes. Can you imagine Ukrainian soldier expecting an attack in any minute to get distracted by shaving the face? Come on. Naturally, we are not talking about ceremonial occasions or being stationed in barracks. Yes, hygiene and order are essential, but scratching your chin and cheeks in the field is extremely inconvenient. In a nutshell, here we are to a notion of combat beard. With all said, according to modern regulations today, the elite soldiers may grow out their beards and wear long hairs if it is useful while conducting secret operations in Syria, Iraq or in Afghanistan in the past. Since there are no more coalition forces there, instead we have Taliban with their own beard style. But still, the beard war in Western armies is continuing. Officials are reluctant to ease beard standards, regular soldiers are still forbidden to wear beards, and it is prestige only for high-ranked officers and exclusive special operators. That's all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to smash like button and subscribe on our channel. See you next time. Stay tuned. Blue, blah, 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 blah.